Okay. <coughs> People of Earth, I hope you all feel welcome. Um, so, I won't be very long about the introduction. I'm Bjorn Faller. Most of you have seen me. I've done C since like forever, approximately. Uh, today's topic is variant visitation variations. Uh, how many of you have used std variant and std visit from C17? Okay, half of you. More than half. You Sorry? don't know about it because there's a difference. Know about it, okay, sure. Yeah. More than I thought. Excellent. So, for those of you who are not really familiar with it, let's see if this works. Oh, <laughs> great. Let's do it like that instead. Okay, so variant came with uh, C17. It's a, a template type that takes a, a number of, of other types. And uh, it's a sum type. And by that we mean that having here uh, V that is a, a variant of A and B, it means that uh, an instance of V can hold all the values of A and in addition it can also hold all the values of, of B. So it's the total value space of V is the sum of the value spaces of A and B. It's type safe in the sense that if, if I have here my V that is a variant of A and B, I initialize a, a variable with, with an A. I can ask it, are you holding alternative A? If so, I can access it and everything is fine. If I'm just doing a, a get of type B, it will throw because it doesn't hold a, a B, it holds an A. So it's uh, sort of like a, a union, but, but a more grown-up one, a safe union, where you, the instance knows what type it, uh, it holds. Which is kind of, yeah, who, who uses unions anyway? Uh, it's a value type that is an important thing. You can, you can copy them, you can move them, store them in uh, vectors, whatever. Uh, but the cool thing is visit. You call, call visit with a visitor and a number of variants. And uh, the visitor must have uh, function call operators uh, that must be callable with all the types that a variant can, that, that all the variants can have. And it will call the visitor with the, with the correct types. This uh, sounds a little bit weird maybe, but we'll get to it. It's, it's not a strange thing. So like this, I have a number of types there, add, subtract, constant, a variable, and I say that an, an expression is a variant of all these. And then we can see below we have a function to evaluate expressions. So we have our visitor there that has function call operators uh, that will be called for add or for subtract or for constant or for variable. And we can do different things with these. And uh, if some function call type was uh, missing in here, we would get a compilation error. So that is good. An interesting observation is that unlike when you're doing a, an uh, object-oriented construction where you have a very strict relationship between the types. Here, here the, the types add, subtract, constant and variable, they are conceptually related. They, they sort of deal with the same things, but uh, they are not related at all in the type system, for better and for worse. If you're not familiar with how to design with uh, with sometimes with variant and visitation. I really recommend watching this uh, short presentation by Matthias Push from uh, ACCU this spring. Uh, it's a 20 minute presentation, it's not very long. He compares with uh, object oriented solution and uh, a variant solution for the same problem. And it's, uh, it's really instructive, uh, highly recommended. But some say that the code that is generated is inefficient. We don't like that, do we? We want efficient code. So let's have a look. Uh, 
got both, of course, always. Thanks, Matt, you changed the world. So let's see if I can find my example here. So I don't have ex the exact same types. I have an increment, decrement, add, and subtract, which are put into a, a variant. Can you read this, or is the text too small? I should. Too small. Okay. Like so. That is better. So we have the variant, we have some uh, calc function here that takes a, a, a variant and an integer. We have a visitor, and we call visit. And what can we see here? We, we get the, an index, that is, the, the way the a variant works is that it, it has a generic area for, for the for the current value of the current type. And then it has a, an index variable that says, currently type number three is in use. So it checks if it is FFFF. Uh, if it is, it jumps to two, where we throw bad variant access. If not, it just uses this uh, as an index into a table of uh, function pointers where we do the different operations. Uh, so, yeah. Increment, decrement, add, subtract. And we have the, the table of functions here. Is this terribly inefficient? I, I don't think this is that bad. Uh, is this special case code for variant, or maybe you had written your own variant with the uh, same code having been generated? Is it specially treated by the compiler? It's not specially treated by the compiler, no. But we will get to writing our own uh, visitor, oh. or our own visit function, function template, yes. Maybe you can elaborate on what kind of efficiency you are looking for. I mean, is it speed or speed of Speed of the code or okay, uh, yeah. The, the the question is, would when I say efficiency, what do what do I mean? And uh, I mean uh, runtime efficiency, that, that the execution is fast. That is what I mean. Is there no compiler that can make a jump table of this? None, none that I have seen. No, no, no compiler that I have seen can make can inline the the, the functions. Unfortunately. But we will get to that too. I have a question. Yes. When does this code throw? It throws if uh, we'll, we actually we'll, we'll get to that. Yes. We'll get to that in a, in a in a short while, very short while. So back to the presentation. Why the check for mm -hmm. minus one? Well, let's see what the standard says. Uh, the throws clause on this it says throws bad variant access if any variant in VARS is valueless by exception. Hmm. Valueless. Hmm. Okay. Valueless by exception on a, on a variant. Returns false if and only if the variant holds a value. So the, a variant can hold, can not hold a value. Interesting. Note. A variant might not hold a value if an exception is thrown during a type-changing assignment or emplacement. Hmm. The latter means that even if a variant with a float and int can become valueless by exception, even though float and int are types that can never throw. Because we can have a really evil type like this S here that has a conversion operator to int that throws. Is it from the is this from libofl? No, it is not. It's actually, this is, this is from the standard text. I have quoted it. it Copy-pasted it directly from the standard text. Hence the, the link below. You can look it up yourself. So if I do an in place, we have this uh, variant now that holds a float, which is type 0. And I do an in place of type 1, which is int, and I give it an instance of s. s, will, s uh, operator int will be called, and it throws. 
and now the, the variant V is valueless by exception. Bummer. So th that's why we, why we have that. So we get an inefficiency in a way that we cannot escape from. We, we must check if maybe the type is valueless by exception or, or if it holds a value. So we cannot escape from that check. Uh, I have heard arguments made that instead of throwing it should uh, just terminate because uh, we have already handled the exception. And there is an argument to be made for that. Come, come back to you soon. Uh, but uh, from a performance perspective, it doesn't matter because the cost is in, in uh, making the check T to begin with. Yes? What would happen if it turned off the exception? Uh, well, the standard doesn't say because uh, C++ without exceptions is not C++, so it, it, it doesn't say. But what will happen on compilers that I have seen is that it terminates the program. It still checks, yes. It still checks. Why the call through function pointers, though? This is a real bummer. Uh, so here's what it says uh, about visit. So I've skipped a few points that are irrelevant for this. But let n be the number of variants and complexity for n less than or equal to, to 1, the invocation of the callable must be implemented in constant time. That is, for n equals 1, it does not depend on the number of types in the, in the variant. So how do you do something that is guaranteed to be constant time, regardless of uh, optimization level or anything? The, the only thing I have seen is to populate an array with function pointers and do direct indexing in it. The, the, the array is generated at compile time, so that is that is for free in a runtime perspective. And the indexing is uh, a constant time cost. But, as I mentioned, I have not seen a single compiler that manages to inline this. So, <laughs> ironically, the performance guarantees that, that the, the standard mandates actually causes a, a Poor, poor performance. That is uh, not quite what we would like, at least not what I would like. So, let's break the rules. If you don't know that, it's uh, supposed to be a, a super villain emoji. <laughs> so we can write a non-conforming visit, where we don't care about this performance requirement. So hold on tight, here's, uh, here's some hairy template programming going on. So we have a visit, uh, and due to space constraint, v is the visitor and va is the variant. Sorry about that. Uh, and then we have an extra template parameter index that is the number of types that is held by the, uh, by the variant minus one. So it, it, if we just call visit with a visitor and a variant, index will be the, the index of, of the last type in the variant. So we can write the code check like this. If, if the index, which is now a, a compile time constant, equals to the index that is actually held by the, by the variant, we invoke the visitor with the type that we get at the IDX uh, position. If it's not, we do only if const expert and say that if index is greater than zero, then we, we, we try to subtract one. So if we, in the earlier example, I had a, a variant with four types. So we, we start with three, say three is greater than zero. So we try with two, two is greater than zero, so we try with one, etc. And if we exhaust all the alternatives and we still haven't returned, then we throw bad variant access. Right? Can you all see this compile time recursion? It's a bit... Yes, maybe say it's uh, uh, the 
execution time is proportional to the how far off your yeah so now we have chained uh, a, a number of if else if else if else if uh, in effect yes so you can uh, have a look at this one are, are you familiar with cpp insights far too few hands <laughs> way too few hands you you have to learn this it's a it's an amazing tool let's uh, let's have a look uh, so you recognize this code not at all because it's so small and now it's even smaller okay so look familiar roughly we have increment decrement add subtract we call it let's see what cpp insight says all right can go so we see the calc has this visitor it shows exactly what what happens in all of them and then we see up here visit as we saw it but then it cpp insights does an expansion of all the templates so we can see that we have a visitor visit This is not going well, is it? Uh, there, which is uh, called with with three. And uh, we see if three is indexed, then we call invoke. Otherwise, if three is greater than zero, which it is, we call visit with uh, three minus one. And, and so on until we get to to the last one where we see if zero is greater than zero which is not then else throw cpp insights is really good if you want to see how how templates specifically templates i think uh, how they are expanded what happens uh, it's, it's really good so you go try try this when you come home tonight right And of course, let's uh, see this in, in uh, Compiler Explorer. So we have the same code here, my visitor. Oh, oh no, my Compiler Explorer has crashed. Where is it? So calc, check for minus one, and uh, if it's not, then it calls, yeah, okay, because it's the same. We still have stud visit here. Let's change to my visit. Compared to three, if it's greater than three, we go to five where we throw, otherwise we jump to these locations which are these offsets where we uh, increment add subtract and decrement so now it can be inlined and what more it could make a jump table so the code is strictly speaking not perf not uh, compliant it's a linear if if else if else if test but the but the compiler can see that this is a linear sequence i i know how to handle this <laughs> that is cool so is visit slow i made this from a quick bench uh, another tool that you really should use if you're not um, so there are some t take these results with a huge pinch of salt because it's really difficult to make good micro benchmarks out of this especially since we're measuring such incredibly tiny effects so just to give a little bit of history when i first ran this i had one of the operators i had was a division but the division totally dominates so everything was equal 
So it's, it's that fine level of detail. And also I had a too large set of, uh, of the variants that I wanted to visit and I effectively just measured the memory bandwidth. Not very interesting either. So take these with a huge pinch of salt, but we can definitely see that this version that I made, the, the one to the far left, is fast. And for comparison, there is also an object-oriented one the, to the rightmost, which is slightly slower than all of them. So I would say it's, it's not really slow, but it's not as fast as it could be. Yes. The pink one. Uh, that is an interesting one. I, I debated whether I should use it or not uh, because I don't actually understand the result. The pink one is the, the classic C solution where I have a union and an int and I do a switch. And I expect that to be the same as mine or maybe a s tiny little bit faster because it doesn't have to check for the uh, invalid case. Uh, but uh, these are the numbers I got, e even though I cannot really understand them. So it's not really slow, but it's not as fast as it could be. Uh, it's I at least if you're uh, reasonably familiar with writing template code, it's not that very difficult to write a faster one. How many elements did you have in your variant? It must depend on the size. If you only have one element, it doesn't matter. Uh, if I have only one element, it doesn't matter. My uh, my checks th shown that for Clang, the, uh, the threshold for when it made a jump table was uh, three. Bel fewer than three, three or fewer, it actually made a if else. And four and up to, I don't remember how many I tested, many, I it made a jump table. Always. So how did you choose which one to visit? Did you just pick one at random? I, d yeah, I, d how did I choose which to, to visit? I, d I actually did exactly that. I, I, I picked them at random. I created a vector of these variants and I populated it with uh, randomly generated uh, instances. Uh, and then I just iterated over the, over the vector. So more realistic case, maybe you can put your most likely active member first in the list. Uh, could, would I gain anything by putting my most likely case uh, early in the list? I would say no, because they, they, it generates a, a, a flat jump table. Mm -hmm. There's no speed difference. So, no. <laughs> uh, and this is an interesting thing. The, the performance guarantee from the standard actually per hurts performance. That surprised me quite a lot. And really surprised by LLVM's uh, if else sequence to jump table optimization makes a, a non compliant implementation compliant if you turn on optimization. Curiously, GCC does not do that. It always generates an if else. So, this is what I just told you about how blazingly fast it is, is uh, Clang specific. But that is not entirely true because when I did. Uh, Benchmarking with uh, GCC, it's al also consistently faster than the standard. Uh, and also MSVC does not uh, do jump tables. So, to finish here, if you want to learn more, do read this blog post by Michael Park. It's super interesting. He, uh, he does a much more uh, involved metaprogramming uh, implementation of, uh, of this where he essentially actually makes a, uh, makes a switch, a real switch statement, uh, regardless of how many types you have. It, it, it applies a switch recursively. It's, it's uh, pretty insane. Uh, his, uh, his benchmarks, he has a lot of benchmarks uh, in, the, uh, in the blog post, uh, shows that it's uh, even faster than, than mine is. So have a look at that. If you want to learn, otherwise you have my blog post on the same topic. The, the thing to take away from that one compared to what I wrote here is that uh, I generalized it to have one implementation regardless of how many variants you have. So it, it spans 
well, as, as many variants as, as you need in the visitor. I, I just showed a, a linear one with just one variant. And CPP Insights, that, that, that is your homework. Tried. Thank you, Andreas. Good job. And with that, I am done. Thank you.